Today on The Morning Show, getting that summer glow. Does a higher SPF better protect your skin? We bust the season's most outrageous skincare myths. Good morning, everybody. The first day of summer is just three weeks away, and before you bust out the bikini and take in those rays, we want to help protect the skin you're in. In order to avoid everything from premature aging to skin care, we've enlisted the help of dermatologist Julia Carroll to offer her expert advice and bust the top sun care myths. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So this is so important as we go into summer because the same questions and the same myths come up over and over and over again with my patients. Okay, so what is, do you want to quiz us? I'm going to quiz you. You guys have paddles there. I'm going to quiz you and we're going to say, we're gonna, I don't know who's going to keep track. Someone's well, going to keep track. True and false action True and false. Okay. So if you have a darker complexion, you don't need to wear sunscreen. Oh, that's got to be false. You need sunscreen. Well, false but less? That's right. So it is ultimately false. Natu or dark skin naturally has a bit of an extra protection from the sun, so you don't burn quite as quickly, but people with darker skin can still get sun damage, which shows up as brown spots on the face. They can get wrinkles, and they can get skin cancer. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing there is that people with darker skin, although the skin cancer risk is less, when they get it, it tends to be much more deadly for them. Okay. So it's still really important. Next question? Yeah, next question. The higher the SPF is, the better it is at protecting your skin. Mm, that makes sense, so I'm going to say false. So, it, okay, so you think that the, <laughs> it doesn't make a difference psychology. if you go up high. Yeah, uh, yeah it's certain, I've always heard at a certain point it's just negligible. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's a very common myth. So if you actually oh. put the sunscreen on, while we're do, I'm chatting, I'm going to get someone to just demo some sunscreen for me. All put right, it on. 50, this is like putting cotton on, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> right, well, exactly. we'll see how you use it. Okay. So if you put on a SPF 15, mm -hmm. you're still letting about 7% of the ultraviolet B light through. If you put on an SPF of 30, only 3% is getting through. So you're cutting your risk, you're cutting your amount of exposure by half. Julia, I think I've got too much on yeah, this. Okay. There's no bit. way the sun is penetrating Mark, this. do you have like a napkin? <laughs> okay, so this is interesting. So this is about how they apply it in the lab. Mm. So if that's, you would actually get an SPF 50 for that, but how we usually put it on, mm -hmm. you're only probably getting you're about You're supposed a, to put it on like, yeah. there you go, Jim. That's how they test <laughs> it in the lab. You're supposed to put it on like that? Right, until the white just goes away. That's a little okay. extreme. But we don't do that. So you always go for a higher number because you're probably getting about a quarter of the amount. Okay. Okay, if your foundation has an SPF of 20, your body is adequately protected. Your foundation? Your foundation, For your, your makeup. Face. If you mm -hmm. use a makeup with sunscreen in it, is that enough? Are we talking just for your face or for our For your face, for, for your face. face. You go false. Okay, so it is false. Because in order to get the amount that you need, it says SPF 20 on your lovely mineral powder, you mm -hmm. have to put on 14, 14 times as much powder to get to that number. Oh. So I like to use something like, uh, you know, a product that has a little bit of sunscreen built into the moisturizer. Which way am I going here? Mm -hmm. And um, and then you can use powder as a little touch up on top. So, but okay. it's not enough to just say, oh, my sunscreen, my makeup has sunscreen in it. I'm good. Oh, okay. okay, there has to be a liquid. Has form to be a of liquid. It yeah. If it's cloudy outside, do you still need to apply sunscreen? Oh, absolutely, yes, because the sun can penetrate the clouds, you right? You are right. But I never do. You never. I know. We always <laughs> talk about this. Okay, so this is one of the things, is that I put on sunscreen, I put a moisturizer with sunscreen on every day, and I think that's really important, obviously, as a dermatologist, but also as a parent, because I want my daughter to see me doing this every day, not to look outside, not to check the weather, just mm -hmm. to make it a habit. So there's a fabulous website, hashtag new family rule, and they talk about, there's a really inspiring video that explains to people why it's really important to use sunscreen and, and um, you know, be a mentor for your children in that area. And then it has some fun little coloring pages Don't we and different want things. Some time with your skin exposed. So I'm going to skip ahead to a myth, which uh -huh. I think is what you're getting at. All right. Okay, so if you don't tan, you don't get the right amount of vitamin D. Well, not tan. Hmm. But if you go out, if you with don't your expose yourself, self, you don't yeah. get the right amount of vitamin D. D. Uh, yeah, I'm going true on that. Okay. So, you know, you, you, being in the sun does give you some vitamin D, but it's unreliable. So there's a lot of risk that, associate, that gives you the vitamin D. There's some skin cancer risk associated with exposing yourself. So you're still going to get a little bit of sun through the sunscreen, like we talked about. Even an SPF 50, you're still getting some that's coming through. But if you're really worried about vitamin D, you should get it through pill form or through a supplement. Right. Would you rather through get food. it naturally by just going out in the sun for 10 minutes than well, take a pill? Well, if I said you could get vitamin D by smoking a cigarette. 
Would you want to do that? Mm, well, I don't understand the comparison. <laughs> well, they both cause cancer. Yeah. But if you're 10 minutes in the sun. Mm -hmm. It's cumulative, right? So over the mm -hmm. years, it's like we, we, you know, we talk about cigarette smokers, we talk about pack life and how many cigarettes you mm -hmm. smoked over your lifetime and that's where your risk goes up. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing. And we really need vitamin D, right? Because that helps uh, with the depression and our mood. Is, is that There's right? There's a lot of different reasons for vitamin D, but the vitamin D, you know, we get it in our foods and mm -hmm. we get it in our milk. It's, supp it's supplemented all through our diet. Okay. So I think if you're concerned about vitamin D, the best, most reliable way to get it is either through a pill or making sure you get it through your diet. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do, do you have any more? I do. Uh, right. Sunscreen doesn't expire. Oh. Oh, that's. False. Okay, right good. Now. Yeah, every right. bottle has an expiry date on it. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you should not have a bottle that expires because you should be using enough of it so that you're having to replace it before it expires. Very good Very point. Good. Thank you so much, Dr. Julia Carroll. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, good to see you, Julia. Thanks.